Welcome to Invista Experts on Demand, your unbiased, informative source for supply chain and IT best practices and industry updates. Today we are talking with Davison Schottmeyer, Managing Partner, and Ken Mullen, also Managing Partner of Invista, and we are tackling the topic of WMS implementations. So to start off, let's just talk about what is the first step in planning for a WMS implementation? Typically, that very first step uh, around implementing warehouse management systems involves understanding what your plan is going to be. So many times we see customers who believe that the warehouse management system by itself is kind of the panacea to all the problems, and they kind of ignore some of the other elements like where do I have my product slotted correctly, um, what role and how are my responsibilities for a resource going to change from what they do today, which is typically fairly manual, to what is that going to look like in the future which the, once the WMS system is already in place and our experience has shown that taking a little bit of time to be able to do that up front and make sure you're clear not only will set the right expectations for do I need a warehouse management system what the right type of warehouse management system is but more importantly what's the role of that system going to be and just set those expectations up front. For those who don't know which department should own the system? Well, normally the best department to own the system is going to be the operations department. The reason being is the operations department is going to be the final user of the system when it's all said and done, and it becomes part of the change management process of allowing them to make sure that they own the system from the, the very beginning. They're going to be the ones that benefit ultimately from the system once it gets rolled out. When considering a WMS implementation, how far in the future should you be planning? Well, you always want to at least have three years, if not five years out, when you're planning Horizon. So, for instance, if all of a sudden today I do retail in this building, but I have plans to do e-commerce in the future, just understanding how your business might change in the future is very important. How should IT be involved in the process? When we think about helping companies select an application, we really think that there's three uh, components to that. One is operationally, what is required for the warehouse system, what's the financial justification, and then what's the IT strategy that the organization has set. So initially, we would expect that the IT group would come to the table and say, here's our strategy for how we want to incorporate a new piece of software into our, uh, our corporation. What's the right database structure? What's the operating system? System. Now there's even considerations, do I want to have that system on premise, do I want to put that in the cloud or have it hosted from somebody outside, and then what are all the systems that are now going to have to interact with this new warehouse management system, either that will stay as a staple within the organization or may be replaced and slowly phased out. So we believe IT has a very strong role not only up front, but then through the course of the implementation as well. Now that we know how IT is involved, let's talk a little bit about the project team and what you look for there. From a project team that's coming on site to support the system, you want to make sure that they've got some experience uh, themselves, not only with the, the software, but also with your particular vertical. So understanding that a certain retailer in previous experience had used a system a certain way is going to add benefit to your overall project. What are some tips for managing the vendor selection process? One of the biggest tips that we advise our customers is to make it a customer-led process, not a vendor-led process. We see so many situations where customers bring the vendors in, they haven't defined what their requirements are, and they simply ask the vendor to tell them, what are you good at as a vendor, and tell me how that may apply to my business. We actually see a more effective process, which is doing your due diligence up front, understand the role of the warehouse management system in your operations, and then lead each of the vendors through very deep detailed requirements and scripting capabilities that says this is exactly how we want your system to be able to interact and then you get a chance as an organization to see how does that work effectively within our company. So now you have a customer led process, you'll get exactly the right type of system you want versus surprises that may creep up after you've signed a contract going forward. So I would tell you that's one of the number one uh, requirements and, and do's and don'ts that we encourage our customers to look at when you're selecting and evaluating systems going forward. That's great. Great advice. Now let's talk about modifications. Why should they be avoided whenever possible? Modifications, customizations, extensions, those are all words that you're going to hear once in a while uh, when you're going through this process. There's the hidden cost of what those mods and are going to cost in the future. So there's the initial cost itself of actually 
doing the mod, it, and then there's going to be the upgrade cost down the road. So most people look at upgrading their WMSs every three to five years on the, the long side, and sometimes when you're looking at some of these uh, systems that are now more in a cloud, uh, multi-tenant, you're going to be looking at that one to two years even. So if you have modifications, then it just really makes that process a lot more complicated to do. The other thing is, is really to challenge any of those modifications that you're looking at because most of these softwares now are very mature and have been through multiple sites. So you have to ask yourself, if this is a modification I require, why hasn't someone else required that same modification? Now continuing to speak on costs, what all should be included in the project budget? Things that sometimes get missed specifically are around the testing and the training and the go live support time. That's a time when the transition will start happening that the software vendor will start moving more of the responsibility as part of their change management process over to the customer. So the customer has to make sure that they have the resources, the time that is set up for that, or that they've got extra funds that have been put in place to make sure that they secure resources to do those. Where most projects fail are going to be in those last steps. So from a process of testing where people haven't done the thorough job on testing their specific requirements, the training, make sure that their resources are not thoroughly trained, that can be a Achilles heel that will bring down a project once you go live, and then the go live support itself. You have to take into account in the building itself, especially if I'm a 24 by 7 type of operations, make sure that I have fundamentally got people that are available to help support during those first two weeks of go live. The success of a WMS implementation is going to be made in those first two weeks, depending upon how that go live goes. Are there any shortcuts that can be taken? Shortcuts in general are typically looked down upon. We always get those questions about how do I, how can I do this faster? How can I do this quicker? Um, we really think of it as you have time, you have resources, and you have cost. Um, one of the things we talk about and encourage our customers to look at if they're looking for potential shortcuts is not to try to do the same amount of work in a shorter amount of time because that can be, have some risk associated with that, but try to pare the scope down a little bit as well too. So we've talked about phased implementation and approaches that still allow you to get value a little bit quicker into the warehouse management implementation, but still are building blocks upon the overall goal and scope that you want to do. Are there any other final thoughts on WMS implementation that we didn't get to? Take the right amount of time to design exactly where you think the warehouse management system will have a role within your operation. Looking at IT capabilities, functional requirements, and then any type of cost benefit analysis because there are a lot of uh, options out there. The other thing we talked about is to make sure that this is a customer-led process, not a vendor-led process, and that they're working for you and that you're in the driver's seat in terms of picking the system that will meet your needs. And then the last thing we talked about is you can't do enough testing or training and incorporation to the organization as to why we're making this change, what's the benefit to the organization, and then who's going to be involved and what the long-term benefits are going to be. In some cases, that could be a two to three year process, you know, from start to finish. Thank you so much to Ken and Davis, and we appreciate those helpful insights. Thanks for joining us on Invista Experts on Demand.